present you my research at Stanford about uh, cooking up lasagna journalism. Um, so first, some words about me. Um, I'm a founder at OMI. It's a <coughs> new startup that will launch an iPad app uh, very soon here in the United States. I'm going to tell you more about that uh, later on. Uh, I'm currently uh, a Knight Fellow at Stanford, working on uh, how to augment the news experience uh, in a very different, very various uh, ways. Uh, and uh, also, I like cooking. <laughs> so, let's start with uh, uh, the concept of lasagna journalism, but in a quite gamified way. So, can you tell me what is that? Lasagna, good answer. And this? Still lasagna. Still lasagna, but more precise? Sauce. Sauce, okay. We call it ragu in Italy. Okay? <laughs> then, what is this? Bechamel. Bechamel, very good. Who said bechamel? Very good. <laughs> and this? Parmigiano. Okay? Not parmesan, but parmigiano. There's a huge difference. And this? Mozzarella. Mozzarella, very good. Someone said, uh, when I was presenting this at Google, said garlic. We don't put garlic in everything. In <laughs> and this one is a bit difficult. Ricotta. Ricotta, who said that? Very good. And then some basil and the lasagna. So, I wanted to tell you about this uh, because um, I really think that lasagna journalism is uh, all about layers, just like augmented reality is all about layers. Uh, so, lasagna journalism to me is a new way to report news, test stories, and visualize data by using the layers of uh, augmented reality, graphic animations, uh, and more. So, but my point here is goes well beyond the cuisine. Um, and what I would like to stress is the fact that the journalism and augmented reality, to me, are really done one for the other. There, is a, there are a lot of intersections between the two. Uh, if we take just a moment to think about the ultimate mission of journalism, uh, to me it's really to uh, unveil what is hidden, it's to pursue the truth. Not in a philosophical way, but in a pragmatic way. It's the fact of the fact checking, the, the, the you know what, what happened to, to verify facts and so on. And augmented reality, on the other side, it's also about unveiling what is hidden. There is a by the way, a, a, I don't know if there are a, a people of Greek origins in the uh, here in the oh okay. So how do you say truth in uh, Greek? I don't speak Greek, so... Okay. <laughs> well, uh, in, uh, at least in ancient Greek... Uh, I'm, I'm Macedonian, so for anybody political uh, okay, audience, okay. we can talk later. I see. Well, we're not going to go inside the uh, Greek okay. cuisine and Macedonian cuisine, but the, in the ancient Greek, you say truth, you say aletheia, and it means uh, what is unveiled. A, it's privative, and letheia comes from lantano, what you hide. So the, the truth for ancient Greeks would to unveil what is hidden. And there is really something very common between journalism and documentary reality from this point of view. Um, so to me, you, so of course you can do documentary reality and lasagna journalism with uh, 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 GPS and, and, and uh, uh, location aware uh, journalism, but you can do also that with data visualizations, with digital comics, news games, and all these uh, very um, um, uh, innovative uh, um, tools. But let's take a moment to uh, see what we built um, here at Stanford with Gene Becker uh, from uh, Layard. He was uh, at that time still uh, not yet at Layard, but he's here in the, in the room. I can see him. I did. Um, so the idea was really, um, I mean, I guess everybody, of, uh, uh, everybody here um, experienced uh, this feeling when you were working maybe in a new place um, and you were wondering about what happened in this place, uh, right? So we try to, uh, you know, to fulfill this kind of need of a time machine uh, for this very iconic place uh, on campus called the, the Main Quad. It's 
uh, really where everything started in 1891 uh, uh, at Stanford University. With this project called Quad Mended, so the history of the Stanford main quad augmented. So what we did uh, is that we just um, uh, took different historical pictures. So let's have a look at a couple of examples here. This is the Memorial Arch uh, in 1905, just before the 1906 earthquake. And this is the same arch after uh, the earthquake. So you can really see the difference. You can click on the bar, be redirected to different articles about uh, um, to, to learn more about this. Uh, this is quite funny. Uh, so this guy just cold, just fell uh, into the ground during the earthquake. And actually it was a sort of a nemesis because his, Luis Agassiz is the theorician, first theorician of uh, uh, biological racism. Uh, but somebody put him uh, up there again after the earthquake. Um, this one is also very interesting. Uh, you can see some uh, uh, student soldiers marching on the quad during the First World War. And they are the ROTC, the Reserve Officer Training Corps, whose return is currently being debated uh, in many American universities. So what we did, if you click on the, on the interface, you can both learn more about the ROTC at that time, but also about the current debate on ROTC, which is a quite hot one, especially in this moment at Stanford. This one is also quite uh, uh, funny, in a sense. Um, those pictures come from the, uh, the anti-Vietnam turmoil. Uh, on your left, you can see the um, uh, then uh, Stanford president talking with uh, students pro protesting against the Vietnam War. And on the uh, right side, you can see a bomb that was put in the, his office just uh, less than two years after. So the, the conversation didn't go well. Um, this is the Hoover Tower. Here we put some multimedia. You can hear um, a speech from Herbert Hoover um, uh, during the unfortunate campaign after the, the Great uh, Depression. Uh, so in general, it was a lot of fun. What uh, demanded, especially working with Gene. Um, we used the Hopala. Uh, great uh, um, tool to, to build AR uh, without any programming skills. Um, we put our augments uh, available through uh, layer, and we partnered with the Stanford Archives, uh, which kindly granted us permission to use all this material, and actually um, we were scanning something like 5,000 different pictures uh, from you know, one entire century of Stanford history, it just picked up 20 that were to us representative of, um, um, of the, the Stanford, Stanford history and the main white history. So, um, my point here is also to uh, stress uh, the importance of what journalism and journalists can bring to the AR uh, industry. Um, so this uh, habit for you know accuracy and fact checking this is the first important thing. Then the fact of in a, an AR application to really have an editorial angle. So try to choose and prioritize what you really want, what what your message should be uh, to the audience. Um, also the the fact of you know implementing some ethics conduct code uh, to build trust with the audience. Uh, curation skills, very important, especially in the 21st century journalism. Uh, being able to engage in conversations is quite important in the, in the new generations of journalists. And last but not least, content production. I've been talking with many uh, content creators in the uh, augmented reality space, and in general, they have been spending the most of their time struggling with creating content versus producing actually the, the, uh, the technical, working on the technical part of the augmented reality. So content is a huge part uh, of it, and uh, I think journalists can, can contribute quite, quite well to that. Um, I was asked also how can um, uh, the AR experience be improved uh, from a journalistic and content creator's uh, uh, standpoint. 
Uh, first of all, we experienced some issue with the GPS uh, location. It wasn't always that uh, precise, especially when you have in one very narrow uh, location as the main quad, which has maybe uh, 100 meters of that diameter. Uh, when you have many augments, uh, the GPS in general quite sucks. Uh, so um, we, we had some issues about that. Uh, something that can also be improved is maybe for this kind of time machine-like um, experiences, and I know from Gene that there are many, many uh, people in this country who would like to, to do more history, AR history, uh, would be also interesting to have some timeline uh, feature so that you can choose the, the year you want to see the place you are in. Um, and uh, just travel through, through time and, and, and see uh, how that place looked like uh, in, in the time. Um, then another important thing, thing I, I think is uh, uh, personalization, especially when uh, uh, the density of information, especially when information becomes very dense, and I think that is with, while AR uh, will you know, take off, um, the, there will be a lot of noise, uh, augmented noise uh, around us. It will be important, I think, also to personalize the, the, the AR experience. Um, the fourth point to me are also social features. I think we can still do uh, better with that. Um, and last but not least, Easy to use, having easy to use uh, content management systems, but I have to say that with Hopala we, we really had a, a, a good experience. So, uh, now uh, at the end of my fellowship, I'm going to stay uh, here one year more. Uh, I'm going to uh, work on Oni. Uh, it's, uh, it's a startup that we are uh, building um, to create a compelling news experience on the iPad first and then on other tablets. Um, Oni is, uh, uh, is the best non-English uh, website in France, according to Online News Association. Um, and we have a representative of the ONA, by the way, just here. Uh, another fellow journalist who is also interested in the Automated Reality, Robert. Thanks for coming. Um, and also we were a finalist at South by Southwest as accelerator for, uh, for startups. Um, so we will do um, uh, augmented reality, but we also do interactive visualizations, digital comics, news games. I won't, I won't tell uh, you about this uh, today. But here it is. I'm uh, happy to be here and to uh, have a conversation with you. Uh, we can stay in touch, um, Twitter or via yeah, email. Thank you very much and uh, buon appetito with lasagna giornalista. <laughs>